Hello, I'm Brian Watrous of VMware Education. In this segment, we'll learn how to use VMFS data stores. As you can see illustrated in this slide, your host, your ESXi host, can make use of storage of a variety of types. It can access directly attached storage, for instance, local SCSI storage. It can access fiber channel storage, fiber channel over Ethernet, iSCSI, and NFS. To choose between the different types of storage, uh, one of the things to factor in would be the different capabilities of the different types of storage. For instance, fiber channel, fiber channel over Ethernet and iSCSI all support booting from SAN. On the other hand, NFS and DAS don't. Again, when making a decision between the different types of storage, this chart and information of its sort from the VMware website can guide you towards the type of storage you should use. In VMware vSphere, there's a concept of something called a data store. A data store is a place where we can store files. For instance, our virtual machine files are stored in data stores. We can also store templates and ISOs in data stores. There are two types of data stores, VMFS data stores and NFS data stores. In this particular segment, we're going to focus on VMFS data stores. As you can see illustrated in this slide, a single data store can have multiple hosts and multiple VMs accessing the same data store concurrently. And that concurrent access is crucial for technologies such as vMotion, DRS, and HA. In the following demo, I will illustrate how to create a VMFS data store. In this demonstration, I'll illustrate how to create a VMFS data store, how to browse a VMFS data store, and how we can make use of a VMFS data store. To create a VMFS data store, the first thing I'm going to do is go into Hosts and Clusters view. I'll then select my host. So I've selected host ESXi01. I'll then go to the host configuration tab and then click on the storage link. In here, you can see the data stores that I already have created, but I want to create a new data store. So I'll click on the Add Storage link. And in the wizard that pops up, the very first question it wants answered is whether or not we want to create a VMFS data store or an NFS data store. By choosing the default, disk slash LUN, we'll create a VMFS data store. When I click Next, on the following screen, I'm presented with a list of LUNs to select from. This is the LUN. These, I'll choose one of these LUNs, and the VMFS will be created in that LUN. In order to see these LUNs, uh, I needed to first have consulted with my storage team and have them create the LUN for me and present the LUN to my host. I'm going to select the first LUN. Notice that this is a 10 gigabyte LUN. When I click Next, on the following screen, I'm asked whether I want to create a VMFS 5 file system or an old-fashioned VMFS 3 file system. Uh, I suspect it's fairly obvious we want to choose VMFS 5 to have the latest and greatest features. On the following screen, you see information about the LUN that we're about to add. And on the following screen, we get to name this data store. I'm going to call this data store My Data Store. You might pick a more descriptive name. On the following screen, I get to choose what size I'd like the VMFS to be. Notice by default, the VMFS FS that I'm creating will be as large as the LUN in which it's being created. And ordinarily, that's what you'd want. But if ever you needed to, you could create a VMFS that's actually smaller than the LUN it resides in. I'll go with the default. And on the following screen, we have a summary of what's about to occur. We're about to create a VMFS file system that's going to be 10 gigabytes and resides in that particular LUN. If I click Finish, vSphere will start to create the data store. And in a few short moments, we'll have a new data store. We now have a completely created data store. To see the contents of that data store or any other data store, while in the same storage view, if I right click the data store and choose Browse Data Store, I can see its contents. Now, since this is a brand new data store, all I have in here is a single folder. 
But ordinarily, with the data store that's been in use, you would see separate folders for each for each VM, separate folders uh, into which you can store templates, and separate folders in which you can store ISOs. So thus far, we've seen how to create a data store, how to browse it. Now what I'd like to illustrate is how to make use of that data store in the storage space that it provides. If I change views from host and clusters to VMs and templates view, I can add a virtual disk to an existing virtual machine and use the disk space provided by that data store that I just created for that virtual disk. So I'll do so by right-clicking the virtual machine that I want to add the virtual disk to and choose Edit Settings. In here, we can add various types of hardware, remove hardware or modify hardware. In this particular case, I'd like to add a virtual disk. This virtual machine already has a virtual disk, so this will be its second disk. If I click the Add button, I'm asked what type of hardware I want to add. I've decided to add a virtual hard disk. I'm then asked whether I want to create a new disk, which is what I'll choose, or I could choose to use an existing virtual disk that came from another virtual machine. Or a third option is to create something called a raw device mapping. We talk all about raw device mappings in our training. On the following screen, we get to decide how large of a disk we would like to create. Now, as you'll recall, the file system I just created is only 10 gigabytes, so it would be pretty sensible to create a virtual disk that's smaller than that size. I can then choose between thick provisioned virtual disk or a thin provisioned virtual disk. Uh, we'll talk in the next segment about what the difference is between those. And then we get to specify where we want the virtual disk to reside. Now, by default, the virtual disk that I'm creating is going to reside in the same location as the virtual machine. In other words, whatever data store the virtual machine's files are stored in, this new virtual disk would also be stored there. But to illustrate making use of this new data store, I'm going to choose to specify a data store. I'll then click the Browse button, and you'll notice that amongst this list of data stores is my new data store. If I select my data store and click OK, then click Next, I can then choose to present the virtual disk in a variety of different ways. I'm going to choose to go with the defaults. We have a summary screen. If I click the Finish button and then the OK button, you'll notice in the Recent Task section on the bottom of the vSphere client, it is creating and has now successfully created a virtual disk. So in this demonstration, you've seen how to create a data store, how to browse the contents of a data store, and how to make use of the storage space that the data store includes. This concludes this particular demonstration. VMware Education Services offers training in over 500 training centers across the world in 60 different countries. We offer both direct training and training through our VMware authorized training centers. We offer instructor-led training in both classroom and live online formats. We offer private on-sites and e-learning modules available online. To find out more information, please see us online at the URLs listed on the screen. Thank you.